Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is your virtual pastor, Brother Gene Porterfield, and I'm grateful that the Lord has given us this opportunity to share the Word of God with you. Now listen, we've had an awesome time in the presence of the Lord, and I want to give you an opportunity to join in to the services of Ford Memorial Temple located at 4031 Germantown Avenue in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Lord has been faithful to us, and the Lord has kept us. The Lord has allowed us to be able to share these services with you, that it may enlighten you, that it may enrich you, and that it may cause you to walk closer with the Lord. My friend, I want to thank you for this opportunity that we have to share ministry with you. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to share this. I want you to like this, and I want to encourage you to sit back and receive what God has for you. It's not about all of the other things. It's about making sure that in whatever state you're in, for whatever reason, that you get the word of God. And I believe God has a word for you today. I want to offer prayer to you after this broadcast. I'm going to come back and I'm going to say a word of prayer for you. It is through the prayers of the righteous that God will meet your need. I believe that God has a word for you and I believe that your deliverance is nigh. Why don't you enjoy this broadcast and then we'll be right back to share with you on ways of connecting with us and how you can become a part of this great church. God bless you and enjoy the service. I was over there clapping my hands and I heard the word suddenly. I left my glasses home this morning so I couldn't look up that scripture, but I heard the word suddenly. Amen. No matter what you need in your life, God can do it suddenly. Amen. There's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. So no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what your prayer request is, I believe today there's a miracle called suddenly. Amen. So declare that in your life today. Amen. No demon in hell can prevent the move of God that's getting ready to come in my life. The promises of God are yea and amen. And I still believe God. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. I believe the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he's going to move on your behalf, Sister Patrice, he's going to move on your behalf suddenly. Hallelujah. Look for it. Hallelujah. And raise your expectations to know that God is able. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know trials and temptations and things are coming around, but we have to stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And believe his word. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our announcements for the day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Our announcements for the day, uh, today after morning service, Over Overseer Harbin would like to meet with all ministers and deacons downstairs in the conference room. Excuse me. Come on, clap your hands, everybody, and give God praise. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, bless him. To our overseer Harbin and to all of our elders, to our ministers, to our missionaries, to our deacons, to all of you, our saints and our friends, we are grateful for the Lord has given us another opportunity that we're able to come together on a Sunday morning. Elder Jackson said she heard suddenly. Amen. And I just want to tell you, Acts chapter 16 says that these men were in prison. They were in a prison situation. But when they begin to praise God, when they begin to pray, the word of God says, and suddenly. Not just the prison bars, but the foundations of what was holding the prison together began to crumble. And I'm not trying to pump you this morning. I'm going to preach. I got a word for you. But I just want you to know that whatever your situation is, whatever your prison is, whatever's going on in your life right now that has you in a prison, if you would give God a praise, I want you to know suddenly the foundations of whatever is going on in your life is going to be destroyed. And God is going to allow you to walk out and give you the victory. Come on. Don't cry about it. Praise God over oh, hey, hey. You got a prison situation going on, but let God work it out for you. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, 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 
suddenly it's gonna happen. Hey, hey, hey. I said, praise him for suddenly, Deacon Campbell. Praise him for suddenly. While you dancing here, God is working suddenly in your house, in your family, suddenly. Everybody turn around, turn around. Just as fast as you turn around, that's how God is going to work it out for you. Hey, yeah. I got a suddenly blessing I'm looking for. I said suddenly. I said suddenly, mother. Oh. I don't have time to wait on the report to come back. I need a suddenly miracle right now. Hey, I need him to touch my body suddenly. All right. Hey! I said suddenly. I just want you to do me a favor, look at somebody and tell them this is the end of the seventh month. What we've been going through has now become completed. You can't, you cannot experience something new until something has been completed. And I want to prophesy over your life today that what you've gone through the first seven months of this year, today it is complete. Do I have a witness here? Is today the 31st? the 31st. <laughs> that means tomorrow you got a new beginning. Tomorrow starts out new. The first day of the eighth month, you got a new day coming. You got a new day. The cycle changes. The cycle starts over. You got a new beginning. Hey! I said you got a new beginning. And whatever you declare in your new beginning is going to happen. Hey, hey, Roosevelt, whatever you claim, whatever you decree in your new beginning, I claim it by tomorrow morning. It's going to start new. I declare. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, Donna. You done cried about it enough. You got a new beginning. Hey, you got a new starting. You got a new beginning. Hey, you held on seven months. Some of y'all have cried seven months. Some of y'all have labored seven months. Some of y'all went through seven months. But tomorrow morning, I said tomorrow morning, begin your new tomorrow morning. And it is so. And it is so. Hey. 
God, I thank you for the praise. I thank you for the praise. Hey, hey, hey. I thank you for the praise. Hey, I thank you for the praise. You done held on for seven months. But tomorrow morning, it all becomes new. Hey! I said tomorrow it all becomes new. Yay! All right, y'all help me. Hey! Father, we're so grateful and we honor you this morning for this opportunity that we have to share with your people. Now, God, as we declare what you have given, we pray now, God, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Lord, our Redeemer, we pray. Amen and amen. Can you give God yet another hand clap of praise? Amen. Numbers chapter 23, verses number 19 through 26. Numbers chapter 23, verses number 19 through 26. I need a miracle in my eyes. So like the glasses don't want to work. I rebuke this getting old spirit. As you shall work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Numbers chapter uh, 23, verse number 9. Thank you, sir. Verse number 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? Verse number 24, Behold, the people shall rise up as a lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. Verse number six, But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that must I do. I want to talk to you this morning from a subject entitled, God Said It and There Are No Take Backs. Look at your neighbor and say, God said it. And because God said it, there are no take backs. Clap your hands and give God praise this morning. 
This morning, I want to, first of all, thank God for all of you being here. Sister Darnese, thank God for uh, you being here. Thank God for Sister Melanie being with us this morning. Can we thank God? Amen. And uh, thank God for her daughter and granddaughter, the babies and that. No, y'all ain't saying nothing. The babies and the God be. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. To all of our visitors, amen. We thank God for you. Amen. To you, you and you. Amen. I did thank God for Lady Porterfield this morning, didn't I? God bless you, Lady Porterfield. Thank God for you. Amen. And uh, all of you, God's people, to our minister of music, let's thank God for him and for all that he does. As we get into this word this morning, let's remember some uh, playground rules that y'all uh, may have forgotten. Let's see if y'all remember some of these. The first one I want to talk about is taking turns. Y'all remember about taking turns? If, and, and this is something that if you expected to have friends to play with, you had to learn how to take turns. In other words, you had to learn how you couldn't hog the ball. You had to learn how to share. And, and though you may have gotten all the shots in like I was, you may have been uh, the, uh, the underrated star. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You had to learn how to share and you had to learn how to take your turn. You had to wait on your turn to come. This was something that you had to learn in childhood because as you became an adult, you had to learn how to manifest what you learned as a child and learn how to take turns. Look at somebody and say, you just got to learn how to take turns. Sometimes it's not going to be about you. Sometimes everybody ain't going to call your name out all the time. Sometimes you got to learn how to sit back and let somebody else shine and let somebody else have a moment where they can experience the hurrah of everybody else. Taking turns, learn. You have to learn that even in marriage, taking turns. You can't be the one always giving out orders and sometimes you have to be able to assist and to help. All right. Sometimes as, as husbands, we uh, have to sometimes get in the kitchen and we it's our turn to make dinner. Sometimes we got to learn. We have to, uh, uh, it's, it's our turn to clean up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't, don't, don't like to do it. Y'all ain't helping me. But every now and then you have to learn how to take turns and assist. A whole lot I could say there, but I'm going to get off of that. Praise the Lord. I ain't going to bother with that. Amen. I know the bishop ought not be made to clean up. Have to, you bishop at that church, but down here you're going to clean up. If you make a mess, you're going to clean it up. you got to learn how to take turns. Sometimes, you know, taking turns, sometimes you you got to learn how to take turns watching movies. Sometimes you, uh, you know, you might have to watch Color Purple for the 800th time. What you want to watch? Uh, but sometimes you got to take turns and you learn that. It helps. You know what? Sometimes you got to learn how to listen to the other side of a story. Sometimes you can't be the one always talking. Sometimes you got to take turns and shut up and listen. I, I'm, I'm always impressed by uh, Deacon April in conversations because uh, many of you, if, you, if you've ever had conversations with Deacon April, it would almost seem as if she falls asleep on you. Uh, you can talk to her and she just goes silent. Uh, and I said to her, I, I, what's wrong with you? Are you listening to me? She said, yes, Bishop, I'm listening to what you're saying. Sometimes you're not used to that. You're used to people going back and forward with you. And sometimes it takes you to be able to listen so that you can properly make an assessment. Here's another one that we had, uh, uh, and that was no cutting the line. Y'all remember that? 
Uh, if, if we were playing a game and they were choosing and everybody was standing up in line, sometimes you would try to get around somebody else so that you could be chosen next. Sometimes in the lunch line, we would uh, uh, cut in front of folk. That, and you know, you know, you knew the you knew the one to cut in front of. <laughs> Trust me, they didn't cut in front of me. Now I wasn't a fighter, and I didn't bother nobody. I didn't bully nobody. But don't cut in front of me in the lunch line. Now, you can cut in front of me in the library. You could cut in front of me when it was time to do our labs and everything, our experiments and all. You can cut in front of me, get your supplies then. But in the lunchroom, don't you cut in front of me because we were going to have a problem. And, and, and what we, if, if we don't master that in childhood, do you know that we will do the same thing as an adult? And that, that psychologically, we will start cutting the line of life. And we'll start looking for shortcuts to get around going through the process. But you know what? What happens a lot of times is we don't realize we, I'm, I'm a person that, and Lady Porterfield will say to me, we'll get in a traffic jam and I will immediately look for a detour. I immediately look, I don't like sitting. And she said, why do you do that all the time? Why, you, you just, you spent the same amount of time of just sitting. I just don't like sitting, especially in Philadelphia. Y'all ain't saying, I wanna keep moving. I, if I'm gonna be a target, I'm gonna be a moving target. I don't like just sitting in, I don't like sitting. So I will get to moving around. But what happens is just because you get out of the place and get out of your line doesn't always mean you're going to get there faster. Sometimes it takes even more time when you get out of the line. Y'all ain't helping me. You get out of line or you, you and I know, you, I know you've seen this in, in, in the grocery store where you have somebody as a whole lot of folk uh, in line and you frustrating and you getting mad and, and, and somebody else opens up the line and you run over there to that line only to find out that that cashier is Methuselah's sister. And you looking back and everybody else is waving at you by because you decided that you were gonna cut the line. We do it in life. We, 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 we will cut folk and we will jump in front of folk and uh, we'll cut folk off and we'll jump in front of people in positions and, and think that if we do certain things, it will get us somewhere faster in life only to find out that we have wasted more time rather than just going through, everybody say, the process. And we had one called no do-overs. Y'all remember that? In other words, whatever decision you make, that, nah, you can't. I got some phase 10 people. And I have to pray with them, Sister Darnese, because they like to take cards, and after they put it down, they realize I should have kept that card. And, 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 and they'll, they'll go to grab. No, I didn't mean that. Ain't no do-overs in this game. Once your hand get up off of that car, that's it. You can't go back and make a decision uh, three hands later. Oh, I, did, I didn't mean three people done gone and you coming back tomorrow. I didn't mean to put that car down. Too late. Uh, there's no, no, no do-overs. But well, here is the one that I want to spend my time this morning and as I hurry, I want to talk about no take backs. No take backs is a rule of the street, of the game. And it simply means that whenever you give something, you cannot ask for it back. Whether it is a physical gift, a gift of money, or even a gift of time, once you give it, you can't take it back. And, and that's in the street that is known as an 
Indian giver. Somebody that will give you something and then when they get mad with you, they come back. Y'all got any, y'all ever had friends like that? You ever, you ever, you ever had, ever had folk in your life that, uh, uh, you know, you know, they do something for you and, and get mad. And, uh, I, 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 I had a friend, uh, uh one time and, and they bought, uh, uh, some groceries, you know, and, and put it in my freezer and uh, then they got mad at me and, and, and. We, they come, uh, overseer, they come to the house early one Saturday morning. And they come through and they was mad. We done had the argument Friday night, Saturday morning. They come to the house and, and they barge in, went to the refrigerator and took all the meat. Y'all ain't saying that. Took everything that they put in there. I, I want you to understand you have some people in your life that will be Indian givers. In other words, they will give you something based upon how you are responding or acting to them at the moment. Now, I want to tell you this. You got to be careful to make sure that you know the individual and where you're getting what you're getting from. Because many of folk lives have been messed up. Oh, let me just stop through here for a minute. Many of folk lives have been messed up because they were in relationships that they gave something to and then when it didn't turn out the way that they wanted it to turn out, they ended up, y'all ain't being bankrolled. They ended up being messed up. They ended up all, and I always ask the question, where did all of that love go? Y'all, where did all of that happen? What happened to all all of that that now that we are on the outs or we're not working out now I'm the worst person in the world and now and I want to tell you something you need to learn how to stay out of them kind of situations you need to you need to learn how to stay away from fair weather folk because if they do it to somebody else they're gonna do it to you you got to be careful in how you give and what you do for others now, you've got to make, a, make up in your mind that you know. I said, Lady Porterfield, one time I said, I just need to know how you're going to act. You know, if I leave, I need to know how you're going to act, what you're going to do. You're all nice and sweet. But I want to know about the other side of you when I tell you this ain't going to be no more and I hit the door she said ain't no way you leave ain't no problem ain't no problem you ready to leave let me know you ready to leave we ain't going through all that now you might not be walking out when you leave <laughs> You might not wake up out your sleep. Now, I'm just, I'm just telling y'all, something mysterious happened to me. Y'all make sure y'all get four, five autopsies. You ain't going through all of that. You want to leave, you leave. And, 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 and here is the problem that we have in the church because we have forgotten the rule of no take backs. You know, we have what we call fair weather friends, and fair weather friends are individuals that hail you while things are going well, but will send you to hell when you do something that they don't like. I told somebody, I believe it was uh, Aspiring James, and I think I said it to Brother Dwayne, Deacon Dwayne. The other day, I don't want nobody else to tell me how much they love me. Don't nobody else say, I don't want to hear it no more. Don't nobody tell me how much they in my corner and how much they got my back. I don't want to hear that because it seems as if soon as folk go to pledging their allegiance, they show their true colors. But you got to understand it's not them. You got to understand that the devil is always listening 
For everything that comes out of your mouth and what you don't understand is when you, when you declare something out of your mouth, the enemy is always there to steal your word. He's always an accuser of the brother and he's always trying to cause you to look crazy. So one minute you're talking about how much I love you and how much I'm this and how much I'm that. And as soon as you say it, the devil will come and try your words. So this is the command that instructs another party that if you engage with me, ain't no take back. What you bring in here stays here. Uh, you know, you don't, well, let me, let me go. I want to talk to you about the insecurity of Balak because I'm running out of time. King Balak of Moab sees the children of Israel and he recognizes, watch this, he recognizes that they are numerous and that they are powerful. Here's the problem in the church. Many times you have not been trained to see your worth, your potential, or your power. We come to church and we are shouted. We come to church, we dance. We come to church, we sing. We look up, we dress up, we do all of this stuff. But in the years that we have been coming to church, nobody ever took the time to teach you your value and your worth. Nobody ever took the time to allow you to understand how great you really are. And, 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 and this, is, this is the problem that the children of Israel had. See, the children of Israel didn't really understand who they really were. They didn't understand how the other nations looked at them. They were just worried about what God wasn't doing for them at the very present moment. They were so worried about crying because they didn't have this or they didn't have the other. But what God was trying to get them to do is learn how to see themselves the way their enemy saw them. God, I've, I want to talk this through, but I feel something here today. Sometimes you got to take a moment to look back and, and realize the reason why you got so many haters is because your haters are looking at the potential that you don't know you possess. They're looking at you. They're looking at you and trying to figure out how in the world you got to where you are. They're looking at you, trying to figure out. Now, I know, I know her husband ain't with her. I know, I know she ain't got no money coming in. How in the world is she driving what she driving? How is she living where she living? How is she wearing what she wearing? You got folk that will look at you and be envious of you and don't understand that God is on your side. And, and here's the next thing. You got to understand that you will come across a Balak. And this is the thing about Balak. You are really greater than what they will even tell you. <laughs> Balak sees your greatness, but he will never tell you how great you really are. Can I, can I stop through here long enough? Because you got some folk that will downplay you all the time. You got some folk in your life that you will come across and they will always put you down. I want to tell you something. If you got folk in your life and they are always cynical, they are always optimistic or pessimistic and they are always, they can't never give you no props. They can't never encourage you. It's because they don't want you to get to your true potential. They don't want you to see how great you really are. And if you got people in your life that are not celebrating you, if you got people in your life that are not pushing you I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news I don't care how much you like them and love them you need to start reevaluating their place in your life because anybody that loves you is going to push you anybody that adores you and values you is going to help you get to your next level look at your neighbor and say I love you too much to be intimidated by you 
you're greater than they will ever tell you because if you were not a threat to them, if, if the children of, watch this, if the children of Israel were not a threat to Balak, he would have opened his gate and would have allowed them to go past. He would not have did all that he did to them when they never was trying to stay there. They were just trying to pass through. But because of their greatness, Balak says, I got to do something to them. You, you ever have folk that just do stuff to you and you ain't never done nothing to them? You ain't never said nothing about them. You ain't never killed their cat. You ain't never poisoned their goldfish. You, they just don't like you. And, and it will be all right. Listen, I don't understand this. It, it will be all right if you, just, if you don't like me. But why you got to not like me and then try to kill me at the same time? Balak, watch this, was in fear of his kingdom. Just because someone or something has power and position and even a title, it does not mean that they have security of their power, position, or title. I want to tell you this. A title and a position does not give you the authority of security. Just because you got bishop behind your name, just because you got doctor or DD or, or MBA, I know several folk that have degrees and have spent a lot of money going to school, but they are insecure people. They don't know their self-worth. They don't know their value. And anytime somebody comes up alongside of them that can do it like they do, they automatically go berserk and go crazy and start attacking because because they're not secure in their place. You got to learn how to be secure in what you do. I learned years ago that there were musicians that were far greater than I ever were. I'll never forget the first time I ever actually came as an adult that I came to 4031 was the installation of uh, Elder Ford at that time. He was being installed as the pastor. I came up with Bethel Temple. I sat right there about where uh, Missionary Shatim was sitting. Now, understand me. You had Stephen Ford on the organ. I mean, he just, he wearing it out. He just going, he doing all he did. You know, uh, I had another, another uh, y'all remember Jay? I think his name was Jay. He had keyboards up. Uh, uh, he, was, he was playing. He had James Poison. He was, had the baby grand. I mean, they just, they, everybody just doing, Don was on the bass. I mean, they, everybody's doing everything that, that you do. And, and uh, 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 the choir, Bethel came up, choir had to sing. Vincent was on the organ, but they had to go back. Vincent had to leave. And Apostle Evans got up. To preach y'all ain't helping me I'm just sitting back there I, and, and all of a sudden Apostle Evans says Eugene come and help me on the organ <laughs> what Eugene is another you is another Eugene here and he's looking at me he's telling me to get up and get on the organ and it was at that moment that I learned I don't care what anybody else can do. There is something specific. God help me today. Yee. There's something specific that he needed me to do that Stephen Ford couldn't produce. There was something specific. Y'all ain't helping me. I, I don't care who has come through this church. I don't care who has ministered in this pulpit. I don't care what anybody has done. You need to understand that there is something specific that you offer this church that can't nobody do like you can do. Yeah, there's a whole lot of folk that can pray, but can't nobody pray like Overseer Harvey. 
Yeah, there's a whole lot of folk that can read the scripture, but can't nobody read the scripture like Deacon Roman. You got to understand, and, and you know what? I'm secure in waiting on my turn. God help me. Y'all ain't, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't have to do it every day. I don't have to do it every Sunday. But you better believe when my opportunity come, I'm going to give it all the best that I got. Why? Because I'm anointed to do what he's called me to do. When you are secure in who you are, you understand that a title doesn't make you who you are. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to call me Bishop. You can call me Brother Porterfield. If you want to, you can call me Eugene. Y'all ain't helping me. You know why? Because some of the richest pastors in the world don't even go by apostle. They don't even go by archbishop and, and, and bishop so-and-so. You call Brother Jesse. Brother Kenneth Copeland. Brother Hagen. And they ain't getting upset. Or uh, my, my, my title is bishop. You got these men that don't have no title and getting out walking and going into Rolls Royces and, and getting on private jets and you got eight titles and ain't got a pinto. Y'all tell me to mind my business. Fear causes people to walk in insecurity. Watch this. People who are insecure begin to make false moves by connive, being conniving and manipulative. Can I talk to you this morning? People who have gotten where they have gotten illegally. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying. When you get to where you are illegally and you don't go through the right process, you can't never sleep at night because you're always worried about what folk is trying to do to take what you have. But when you are secure in your position, when you are secure in who you are, you can go to sleep at night knowing no weapon. I wish I had a church here this morning. No weapon that's formed against me Missionary Morris, no weapon that is for no scheme, no plot, no plan to keep from me what God has for me. It will never work. They're, they're, they're insecure and they're fearful because a lot of times they're trying to keep something that they know doesn't belong to them. I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something I'm going to tell you something and I don't want to get in nobody's business but I'm going to tell you something anytime you have a man or woman that belong to somebody else I'm just using this as an example and I don't know why I'm going y'all don't get no attitude with me I'm just trying to help you don't, get, don't, don't, don't act like that with me anytime you get involved with somebody that ain't yours I want to tell you it ain't going to ever last Anytime you take something that don't belong to you, if you got to steal it to get it, you're going to have to do all kind of crazy stuff to keep it. Mm. Balak sends for a prophet named Balaam. And you know the story. He sends for Balaam to curse the Israelites. Watch this. The tactics of insecure persons is to find out your place of vulnerability and gullibleness. Insecure people are very smart people. They're very wise people. They're insecure. But it's not that they're not paying attention. Insecurity doesn't mean that they're dumb. Insecurity means that they are trying to figure out your weakness. 
Mm. I just want to stop through here long enough to just tell you, some of y'all got to learn to shut up. I, I know I should be saying, I know I ought to say, be quiet. No, some of y'all need to learn how to shut up. Because as much as you are talking, you are giving the enemy all of your business. You're giving the enemy all of, y'all ain't helping me. You, you, you get, I, I want to bring back testimonies, but we don't know how to just give testimonies of victory. We got to give up and give everything that's going to, I praise the Lord, my husband, he left me and he ain't, because he ain't, and this, that, and other, and, and he owns this, that, and then you get mad because folk is talking about you in the church. You down there praying, and instead of praying, you talking about who done hurt you and how you feel and this and that and the other. And the devil is listening to you, and you wondering why things ain't changing in your life. Why? Because you keep giving the devil ammunition to keep firing at you. The tactics of insecure people are to find out your weakness. And... For Balak, he recognizes that the children of Israel are motivated by a word from the Lord. He recognizes that they are people who, because they don't have uh, gods like we do, they, have, they don't have idols like we do, as the Moabites did and, and the Hittites and all of the others, Canaan, Canaanites did. They have images. They had images that they went to and they believed in. The children of Israel, however, in order for them to make a move, they had to wait on God. And if God did not speak it, then they had to stand still. Balak recognizes this about the children of Israel and he now employs a prophet. <laughs> He tells them, Balak calls, calls Balaam and says, Balaam, what I need you to do is curse them so that they will fall apart. Numbers 22 and 6 says, come now, therefore I pray thee, curse this people for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure, I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I want that, them, that whom thou blessed is blessed and he whom thou cursed is cursed. This brings me to my next point and that is Balaam is not powerful enough to change God's mind toward you. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I don't care how many revivals Balaam runs. I don't care what platform Balaam is preaching at today. Balaam is not more powerful than God's word toward your life. Some of us have been tricked into believing that Balak, uh, Balaam has the ability to speak something that God has not said. And wherever you have a Balak, you will always have a Balaam because Balak and Balaam have to work together. Watch this. Balak does not know how to operate in a spiritual realm, but Balaam is not going to have the resources to be able to do it on its own. So Balak hires, y'all heard what I said. There are some prophets today that are for hire. And, and, and you got some prophets today that will prophesy based on the highest bidder. Balaam serves as a false prophet that speaks as if he has heard from the Lord. I know y'all don't know any of them. Balaam has absolutely no power of God. None. But many of us have been sucked into the trap of emotionalism and sensationalism and have denied the very power of God. 
We have gotten moved, we are moved by the name because this person is a social media wonder. Because this person is on everybody's timeline, we automatically feel and believe that they are the prophet of this season. The devil is a lie. God has folk in unknown places that have never been heard before. There are people that God have in the bulrushes Folk that don't have no license, don't have no title, don't have a Rolls Royce, don't have a Mercedes Benz, but they have power with God. And because they are not known, you think that God is not talking to them. But I tell you one thing, it does not matter whether or not you have a cathedral or whether you have a storefront. God can use whomever will give their heart to him and allow him to use them. Y'all got to get out of this thing where y'all feel like, oh, oh, the popularity means that God is with them because they got this on and got that on and they drive this and they drive that. Some of y'all are quicker to hear a false prophet that wears, y'all ain't going to like me here. Y'all are quicker to hear a false prophet that drives a Mercedes rather than to hear a true prophet that's riding the bus. Y'all ain't helping me here. Your status in life doesn't mean nothing compared to the call of God on on your life a real prophet a real prophetess is not concerned about material things and you know what if you give them a dime or don't give them a dime they're going to say what God says y'all ain't helping me uh, you got to be careful of these prophets that only give you based upon whether or not you give them something there's a word from the Lord. I got a word from you, but, but I, need you to, I need you to sow. I need you to give. Well, tell me what the Lord say first. Tr trust me and I'll trust you. <laughs> give me the word. Let me see if the word is real. Then, I, then I'll know whether or not I'm going to give or not. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I've got to hurry. I, I'm, oh, Lord, I'm over my time. Balak, Balaam, Balaam, Balaam has no power. Balaam's motivation is money, power, and position. I'm trying to move. Balaam is so concerned with a position. He's so concerned with having a high seat that he will sell his gift or he will prostitute his gift to the highest bidder. Oh, y'all be helping you, you, you got preachers today that are uh, not motivated to suffer uh, with the people of God. But they are only in it to line their pockets. And I'm not talking about anybody. But you have folk that have missed, they have missed the real purpose of ministry. Real ministry sometimes is not going to cause you to be able to drive a Mercedes Benz. And, uh, you, but you got to make up in your mind, ministers and preachers and elders, those of you all that are here, you got to make up in your mind that if you don't ever get a, a, a Rolls Royce or a Range Rover, if you don't ever get a mansion, you got to be committed enough that I'm going to preach the word of God, y'all. And, and I'm a witness to tell you that if you be sold out for the Lord the Lord will take care of you look at somebody and say serving the Lord will pay off you ain't got to you ain't got to manipulate nobody you ain't got to hook group and manipulate, manipulate the word of God says Peter and them were worried Lord we done gave up everything to follow after you we don't have anything else and Jesus said to them there has never been a man or a woman that has given everything up and I have not given it back to them a hundredfold in this life tell somebody I ain't waiting for the afterlife tell them I ain't waiting for no pie in the sky tell them God is going to give it back to you a hundredfold in this life. Balaam's prophecy, Lord help me. Balaam's prophecies are always going to benefit him or his team. Balaam, you got to watch Balaam because 
Balaam has an ability to prophesy based upon their expected outcome in your life. That's why you got to be careful of everybody that comes to you with a word. The Lord gave me a word. I got a word. You know the Lord woke me up and gave me a word for you. You got to be careful. And then you especially got to be, now y'all ain't going to like this. You especially got to be careful of lying prophets that you know is lying. Mm, you know the Lord showed me that you've been praying. You know that's a lie because you don't pray. The Lord says you've been in your word. You know that's a lie because you do not read your Bible until you come to church. And now you don't even read your Bible because we got the, script, the, the scriptures on the screen. You don't open your Bible, but, uh, but you're going, mm, yes, Lord. I see the, the Lord is telling me that you've been rejected and, and folk have hurt you. And the very one they're prophesying to is doing more damage and tearing up more stuff. But yet and still, you hooking and quaking and shaking and, and receiving something that you know is a lie. You better be careful of them kind of folk. I, I was blessed. I was blessed by uh, uh, Pastor Bannister last week as she was able to stay. And I, I said, I, I said to, I said to Shiloh, I said, now you know that, but that, that was a real prophet, wasn't she? She said, yeah, Bishop. You, need, you don't need a prophet to tell you you getting ready to get a car. You don't need a prophet to tell you you getting ready to get a house. You don't need a prophet for that. You need a prophet that will tell you your soul is in jeopardy of hell. Come out from what you're doing. God says, I see you. Y'all ain't, ain't helping me. What good is it you prophesying a Cadillac into my life and then I die and go to hell? God says, God says in this text, as I close here, God says that in Jeremiah 24 and 8, he says to the children of Israel, he says to them, and I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. Y'all ain't helping me here. He said, but in verse number 10, he says, but I would not hearken unto Balaam. I'm finished. Y'all ain't helping. He says that I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hand. Look at somebody and say, when God says something, when God speaks something, I don't care what the enemy will try to do. I don't care what the enemy will try to make not happen. If God has spoken something over your life, I don't care who they will call. I don't care who they will try to bring against your life. If God says I'm blessed, I wish I had a church here. I said if God says I'm blessed, ain't nothing that the devil can do about it. Ain't nothing that the devil can do with the blessings of God. Look at your neighbor and help me preach and say neighbor. Oh neighbor. 
if God calls you blessed, I don't care how many people will rise up against you. I don't care how many folk will say you're not going to prosper. If God says you're going to make it, look at your neighbor and say, come hell or high water, you're going to make it because the Lord said you're going to make it. If God says you're going to prosper, I don't care who comes up against you. I don't care who speaks against you. If the Lord said something, it's going to come to pass. You might have to wait on it. I got to get out of here. I said you might have to wait on it. It may not happen today. You might have to wait for tomorrow. But if the Lord said it, it's going to come to pass. They might walk off and leave you. They might speak against you. But when God says something, it's attached to your name. And it cannot be reversed. It cannot be transferred. It cannot go nowhere else. If God said you're blessed, it cannot be taken back. If God said your children are going to be saved, then don't you stop worrying about it. Because God is going to do everything. Y'all, I wish I had time to preach it. Like I feel. I said God is going to do everything that he said. He's going to do it. Look at your neighbor and say God said it. And because God said it, it's got to come to pass. Say it. I, I, I just need I, I need 10 people to get up on their feet and praise God for what the Lord said over your life. If you ever received a word from the Lord, if the Lord ever told you he's going to do something for you, I need you to lift your hands and praise God for what he said he was going to do. It hasn't happened yet, but he's still going to do it. You ain't got it yet but it's still gonna happen can you praise him I wish I had a church here I said can you praise him for what he's gonna do say it do me a favor do me a favor and just encourage somebody standing next to you and tell them God said it ain't no take backs he's still gonna do what he said he gonna do oh come on y'all I tell them, say, ain't no take backs. God is still going to do. Folk might want to take it back. Folk might want to say it ain't going to happen. But if God spoke it. And, 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 and here's the thing. I had, I had some folk prophesy to me since I've been here. Y'all ain't gonna like me. I had some folk to give me some prophetic words and they spoke some stuff. And I said, well now Lord, what do I do with what they told me? And the Lord told me this week while we were away. He said, don't worry about it. He said, because it would have been better for them had they not spoke it. But since they spoke it over your life, he says, I'm going to do it and they going to have to watch me do what they prophesy. I just want you to know some of your enemies have prophesied to you and now you're going to see what they said. Everything that's good. Everything that's good that they said. Everything that they spoke over your life is getting ready to come to pass. Do I have anybody here that will praise God because the word that was spoken is getting ready to happen. They prophesied wealth. God said it's going to happen. They prophesied success. God said it's going to happen. I wish I had somebody. Take a minute and praise God for every word 
that was spoken. Yeah. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, praise him. Come on, rejoice. Come on and thank him. God says there are no take backs. Whom I have blessed, no man, no woman can curse. Do I have any blessed folk in here this morning? Anybody here know you blessed? Oh, y'all ain't acting like it. I say anybody here really know. Now, if you don't know that you're blessed, I want to tell you, you are blessed of the Lord. You are his choice and he loves you and can't nobody curse whom God has already blessed. I need somebody to move your feet and just begin to praise him this morning. I need somebody to praise him. I need somebody to glorify him. I need somebody to give him a praise for blessing your life. I need, there you go. I see you back there. I need you to praise him for what the Lord is doing and it cannot be reversed. Your healing cannot be reversed. Your miracle cannot be reversed. Your breakthrough, your deliverance cannot be reversed. Praise him. It can't be reversed. I said it cannot be reversed. Hey! Lift your hands, Father, we thank you. We give you praise for every word that you've spoken over our lives. God, I praise you for what you have given your people. Thank you for every promise that you have spoken in their lives. And regardless to what the enemy will try to do and what the enemy will try to say, Father, anybody that you have blessed, we know that we cannot be cursed. We know that the blessings that you have bestowed upon us are not temporal, but they are eternal. And therefore, the enemy cannot have them. So for this, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, everybody that believes, shout amen. Come on, give God praise, everybody. The doors of the church is open. There might be one. Hey, there may be one today. There may be one that says I need to be a part of a church. I need prayer. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, come on. Come on, Ford Memorial. Come on, praise him. Take a moment and give him glory. Hey! Hey, hey, hallelujah. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Look at somebody and point it. Look at them in their eye and tell them, don't you be worried about those that will speak over your life. If God said you are blessed, there is nothing that anybody can do with it but accept it and rejoice in the fact that God has blessed you. Can you give him a praise for your blessing? Come on, give him a praise for your promotion. Give him a praise for everything that he's doing in your life. Hey! I had no choice in this. Hey! Listen. Don't don't be mad at Joseph 
Because Joseph didn't have nothing to do with it. Joseph didn't have nothing to do with the fact that he got a coat of many colors. That was his father's choice. Y'all ain't helping me. Look at somebody and say, don't hate on me because daddy gave me something. If you understood what daddy gave me, he gave it to me so all of us could be blessed. God didn't just give it to you for you. He gave it to you to be a posterity in the land. That when the famine comes, God got some people already orchestrated, strategically placed. That when the famine comes, we all gonna eat. Look at your neighbor and say, we all gonna eat. Cause God has blessed me. I've kept you long enough. I've kept y'all long enough today. But just before we go, let's stand to our feet. Just look at somebody and tell them what God says. He never takes it back. God shall not lie. First of all, he's not a man that he should lie. God don't lie. And whatever he says, you can take it to the bank. Even if it has to wait on you to get yourself together. God's word will never return back to him void. But it's going to accomplish everything that it was sent to do. And we thank him. Wednesday night, Bible study. Amen. We'll be meeting on Zoom. Join us. I want y'all to get ready. Amen. I'm going to give y'all the rest of this year. Everybody say the rest of the year. But I want you to understand that in 2023, y'all coming back to church on Wednesday night. You 2000, y'all coming back to church on Wednesday night. Now, those of y'all that, if you're not working or this, that, another, I understand that. But we're coming to church. Amen. We're going to be in the house of God and we're going to worship the Lord. We ain't going to be no lazy church. Y'all ain't. All right. We come, we on Zoom and we just, we drinking tea and coffee and eating crumpets. Come on here. It's time for us to come back to the house of God and get back into the swing and do all that he has done. He's been faithful to us. Amen. And he's kept us. I, listen to me. You better get back into the place with God. Overseer Harbin spoke it and said, if we don't honor God and get serious with God, there's something that's going to come worse than the COVID. And y'all, 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 all right. If we don't get serious with God, there's something that's coming that's going to be worse than COVID. Y'all ain't helping me. And I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but y'all can believe, y'all can believe the lie if you want to and believe that this uh, monkey pox is a gay disease. It ain't no gay disease. I want you to understand that. You, anybody can get it. Don't you believe the propaganda? You better get under the blood and stay under the blood. We cried out, COVID came, we cried, and some of us did better, and, and, and then we went right, went right back to doing business as usual. But this that's coming is gonna be worse. But you know what? The way the Lord kept me from COVID, he gonna keep me from that. I know it's time to go, but can anybody praise him for the blood covering? Can anybody praise him for keeping you covered under the blood? Keeping your family covered under the blood? Keeping your household under the blood? I'm covered and the devil can't have me. Well, my friend, thank God that you've enjoyed this service. I believe and I pray that this word has caused something to happen in your life to cause your faith to excel. Will you allow me the opportunity to just say a prayer for you? If you don't know the Lord, this is an opportunity to know him. If you need healing in your body, this is an opportunity for the healing that you need to happen in your life. 
Will you bow your head? Father, we thank you and we glorify you for your mercies. Now, Lord, we thank you for my brother and my sister, those that are watching and have tuned in. I pray, God, that whatever their need is that you meet it. I pray, God, if they need healing in their bodies, that you would touch them now and that you would cause them to be healed. God calls their faith to come alive and know that you are going to work things out for them. Father, I believe that if they're seeking and they're looking for you as their savior, I believe that they can receive you. And for this cause, we offer you unto them now. Father, they are your children. They belong to you. And Father, we pray now that you would enter into their hearts and sup with them and cause them to be your child. Father, this is our prayer. This is our plea. And we believe it now in the name of Jesus Christ and our souls say amen. Well, listen, if you are accepting Christ, if this is your first opportunity of accepting Christ, or if you're coming back to Christ, I want you to do me a favor. Send us a message in the inbox, or you can just send in an email at mail at fordmemorialtemple.org. You can also call 215-225-5069, and someone will be able to get your information, pray with you further, and give you further instructions on how and what you need to do. But if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that he has died for your sins and that he is your savior, then my brother or sister, welcome into the family of God. It's just that simple. Now connect with us so we can give you further information and you can begin your walk with God and you can grow in him. Well, until our next broadcast, I want to say God bless you and I want to leave you with this, all is well in Jesus' name.